Welcome to Chemisode. This is on acid and base equilibria and the acidity constant or, um, yeah, basically acids and bases in general. So let's go have a look at um, what we're going to learn in this Chemisode. You can get the notes from Edmodo by following this link here. Um, it will take you to an area where you can join our group and download the notes and also um, there's a few quizzes there on the stuff that you cover in Unit 4 Chemistry. Um, iTunes, there's an app for Unit 3 Chemistry and Unit 1 Chemistry, and there will be one coming up for Unit 2 and 4 sometime soon. The YouTube channel, no doubt you're already watching it, that's my YouTube channel there. You can see over about, I don't know, I think there's about 100 videos on chemistry there as well. There's lots and lots and lots of stuff on chemistry in the chemisode areas. So, acidity constants and pH and the ion product rule. These are the things you're going to learn about um, in terms of acids and bases in this podcast. You're going to learn about pH, you're going to remember a few things about pH, and you're going to learn the ion product rule, you're going to learn conjugate acids and bases, the equilibrium constant, you should know about Le Chatelier's principle, a bit about that. You need to know about these things from your year 11 acids and bases stuff as well. So you need to know your pH calculation here. pH equals negative log to the base 10 of hydrogen ions or hydronium. And you need to know this ion product rule where you have hydroxide times hydrogen gives you 10 to the negative 14 and that should be molar squared, a unit with that as well. You need to know what strong acids and weak acids are, and you need to know about dissociation, how acids, acids dissociate. But that's your prior knowledge that you should understand, and you should be able to use that. Let's go have a look at what we're going to learn about. The first thing we're going to do is kind of work out where our iron product rule actually comes from. Here's a theory behind it. Water self-ionizes. Water bashes together and breaks apart and produces this here. All right, produces some hydronium and some hydroxide. With this reaction, we can write an equilibrium constant for it. So we can go, right, products over reactants. So you get concentration of hydronium, concentration of hydroxide, divided by the concentration of water squared, because obviously two waters makes water squared. What we can do is rearrange this equation, where we get the concentration of water squared over two put with K. So if we rearrange it, get K times concentration of water squared gives you this. The reason we do that is because the concentration of water pretty much remains constant. So what we do is we incorporate it into our K value and we call our K value KW, which is the acidity constant or the equilibrium constant of the self-ionization of water. So KW ends up equaling concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide. And through experimental data and through experiments and things, things like that, we work out that at standard laboratory conditions, Kw equals 10 to the negative 14 molar squared. That's because we get um, 10 to the negative 7 hydronium and 10 to the negative 7 hydroxide. That's right, a very small amount of these two things here. This is a very small K value, very small K value indeed. So this is what it is. So this is where we get 10 to the negative 14 equals the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of hydronium. Nice to know where it comes from, I would say. Pretty, pretty good to know where it comes from. But the whole thing about this is you need to know this part of it here. Just this part. You should know that it's only at standard laboratory conditions. You change the standard laboratory conditions, you change your K value. You change where that equilibrium fits. But in general, for all the calculations that we're going to deal with in VCE, we'll assume that it's at standard laboratory conditions and that Kw equals 10 to the negative 14 molar squared. The next thing is looking at how temperature affects pH. Why does pH depend on temperature? It does this because, as we said before, water self-ionizes. Water plus water gives you hydronium and hydroxide. Okay? This has a delta H that comes with it. Okay? Delta H is actually positive 57 kilojoules per mole. So every mole of 
water that actually ionizes requires 57 kilojoules. Notice this is an endothermic reaction. This is an endothermic process, I should say. And being in an endothermic process, according to Le Chatelier, an increase in temperature will put the reaction forward or push the reaction forward. We'll have a net increase in the forward reaction. Okay. What this means is the amount of hydronium will increase. So we have an increase in the amount of hydronium formed. So increased temperature, forward reaction, we increase these two concentrations. Now pH is directly linked to hydronium, so therefore if we have more hydronium, we lower the pH and technically it becomes, well, it lower pH. The solution though is still considered neutral because we have equal amounts of hydronium and hydroxide still being produced. Because of the forward reaction still produces one of each, it's still a neutral solution, but the pH is lowered. So what we can look at is what a neutral solution is for different um, temperatures. An increase in temperature, a neutral solution has a lower pH. For a decrease in temperature, the opposite happens. So a decrease in temperature, we get less hydrox hydronium, so therefore we have an increase in pH for that neutral solution. So that's why temperature depends on pH and why pH depends on temperature. Let's go have a look at the next um, little bit of theory, which is called acidity constants. So now we're going to look at the thing called an acidity constant and how they can be used and how they can be calculated. This is going to be um, only the theory part of it and we'll have the actual working out in another video as well which you can watch. But here's acidity constants and Ka values. An acidity constant is basically a measure of how strong an acid is. Okay, So if you look at um, this, this is an example of an acid, we've got um, hydrochloric acid it dissociates and forms chloride and the hydronium ion. We can write an, um, an equilibrium constant for this where we have products over reactants. Just like we did with our um, acidity constant for water, we rearranged the equation and took water out of it and we incorporated that into our equilibrium constant because the concentration of water really doesn't change that much at all. And we call our new equilibrium constant our acidity, con acidity constant and call it Ka. Now Ka here has the value of the concentrations of your hydronium and your conjugate base, in this case the chloride ion, divided by the concentration of your acid to begin with. And as you can imagine, depending on how strong an acid is will depend on what the Ka value for that acid will be. If you have a very strong acid, your Ka value will be quite large because you'll have a lot of dissociation and a lot of this forming. If your Ka is of a weak acid, your Ka value will be pretty low because as you know, weak acids only partially ionize. So therefore they only partially create a small amount of hydronium and a small amount of chloride ions. We're going to look at um, some assumptions that we make when we, oh hang on, we've got an example first of all of writing a Ka expression for the first ionization of carbonic acid. So here it is here. First ionization basically means the first hydrogen that's being given away. So um, obviously we've got carbonic acid is H2CO3 um, and that gives away one hydrogen to form hydrogen carbonate, that ion there, and hydronium. So the Ka value for this is simply the product of the concentrations of these two um, things and divided by the concentration of your um, hydrogen carbonate. Now that's very fairly easy, pretty straightforward to write a Ka expression, but what do we do when we actually calculate it? And I'll just run through the systems that I use, what I think about when I'm using Ka values and doing concentrations um, and these calculations. Let's have a look at these assumptions that I we make basically. So what we assume when we're using a Ka value is that the system is in standard laboratory conditions. So that means your ion product rule can be used if you need to use it. So we assume that everything's at SLC, 25 degrees Celsius and um, one atmosphere of pressure. Next up, we assume that the amount of dissociation is negligible. negligible. So that means that we, our concentration to begin with of our acid is equal to our concentration at equilibrium of our acid as well. So we have our start and our end are equal. 
the next assumption that we make is that when um, well, it's not really an assumption, it's just a, a kind of fact, really, that the concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of your conjugate base when a, um, an acid dissociates. Because it dissociates to form as a molar ratio of one to one, we just assume that these two are equal. Okay, you can find a lot of Ka's for common weak acids in your data booklet. Um, they're towards the end of your data booklet, and I'm not too sure exactly what page they are, but they are in the VCE data booklet. So therefore, um, with this in mind, what you can often do is go Ka equals this here, or Ka equals this squared divided by HA. So you can kind of arrange this in that sense there as well. There's another thing called percentage dissociation, which is basically the, um, the percentage of your acid that has dissociated. So you get that by looking at your conjugate base divided by your acid. So your concentration of A negative divided by your concentration of HA. And all this type of stuff is going to kind of be explained a bit more in the video that's um, next up, which is me doing a few problems, a few questions on paper about Ka values. So we'll have a look at those in the next video. So yeah, we're going to use these calculations. Basically, every time I do something, I'll write down these types of um, these types of equations. That is for Ka.